you to our sponsors who made this video possible. Please click the links in the description below. After it cools down, we're gonna go on the grinder, do some final shaping with it, and uh, after it's shaped, we're gonna stamp the logo. And after it's stamped the logo, we're actually gonna do the normalizing one more time, and uh, that should be ready to go into a quench.
When we were on, off camera, we put the knife in the heat treatment oven and we tempered it for a couple hours just to release a little bit of the hardness of the knife because after we done the quench, it was uh, simply too hard. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna put the final profile in and we're gonna start working on the uh, tank. And after we done that, then we're gonna, I'm gonna put the fresh belt on and we're actually gonna start grinding uh, the knife itself. Usually for profiling, I'll take one of the uh, belts that has already been used up a bit because the, it, it, it really messes up the belt, the, the sharp edges. And especially when I'm going to start working on the tank and the set down for, the, uh, for our Tegro bolster, you, you'll see how quickly I'm going to destroy that belt. But that's, that's why I use the old ones. All right. Now we got our profile out, we got a nice uh, 90 degree shoulder on our knife. So we're ready to actually start grinding the, uh, the knife itself. I'm gonna put a new belt on, gonna start with the 36 grit and then we're gonna go upwards from there. I'm sure other people have told that, told that before, but don't be cheap on your belts. If it's blunt, just put a new one on because you're risking the hours of your work if you overheat your knife. That was our rough grind. The main reason that I forge thin because I do like to leave uh, a rough finish on the back of it. So I would forge the bevel in a bit and I would basically grind it half in, half out and leave a nice rough finish. But of course, you need to be careful not to keep it straight. As you, you've seen me basically moving the grinders back and forward, I kind of found out that if you go like this, you can get a really nice flat finish if your plating is of course flat. Gently I would go like this and flatten it all out just with the piece of wood. The other thing I use that and that's, I don't think many people do, do, do it like I do. Just two reasons I don't like I like my fingers so I want to keep them far away from the belt. The other thing is I, I do personally think you can get a better and more even pressure with this uh, flat piece of wood so you're using the whole width of the belt as you forge. Especially on this belt, it needs a bit of a pressure to use it properly. I don't know if Vince is going to confirm it or that. <laughs> but uh, I do like to use a, a, essentially a piece of wood to give it, give it a nice flat finish. Uh, yeah. Now that we got that initial grind going, we're ready to jump on the higher grid belt. So I usually move from 36 to 80. Pick a fresh one if you got one. So that's after 120, 
couple scratches going other way because of the wood, but nothing to be worried about. So now I'm gonna use those, Scotch Brights. Everybody has a different progression, that's what I do. Figure out the thing that works for you. It doesn't need much, it's just to touch it up. We're done with the belt. So it's, it's super thin already, almost sharpish. So now what I do, I usually use the wheels and go the other way. Who don't know, those are scurfing mops. It's essentially just the normal polishing mop with some glue on it and the oxide stick to it. You can get this essentially in different grids, just a bit of oxide, up to 320 grid you can buy. And uh, that's the easy way to do the polishing the other way instead of hours of hand sanding. But the uh, downside of it is you need to be quite careful with it. Again, not to overheat your edge because we're super thin right now. And that's what I usually do instead of hand sanding because time and it's boring as hell. So I would go through 120, then I would move to club wheels. And can jump in on the next one, which is 240. Now I'm going again on the uh, Scotch Bright. Rough polishing wheel. And the last one, just a nice loose mop with the yellow. All right. And we pretty much get like a semi mirror, mirror finish right now. And what, less than, than an hour? Something like that, that we took for it. So this is it for the grinding part. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna glue the handle. Huh? <laughs> and then we're gonna tape it. And after all it's all shaped up, then we're gonna do the acid edge. I'm just gonna tape it up because this is actually pretty sharp already and that was not sharpened, and I don't really want to cut myself. Now, what we're gonna do is pick the wood. We got, I got couple, uh, bog oak, which is really, really nice, a bit of Paul Rosa, so, which gives a really lovely reddish color, some, African black wood, which, is, which I have not tried yet. So I'm kind of tape, tempted to, to check it out. And this is like a type of wenge. So I think we're gonna give the African black wood a go and see how that looks like. So first things first, I'm just gonna drill a hole. All that stuff, that African hardwood. All right, so we got the hole ready for our tank, but of course it's still way too small. So we're gonna go and use the approach to square it up, to basically get it as close to the final fit as possible. I 
I must say this black wood, it's hard as nails. <laughs> Slowly getting there. Almost there. <laughs> Almost there. So it's pretty flush just by doing it, taking your time with the brooch and do a little bit of adjustments on the grinder. And now this is ready to glue up. So what I would usually use is the G-Flex to glue the handle, but uh, G-Flex takes forever, I mean for a day, for it to solidify. So since we want to do it fairly quicker, what we're going to do is uh, use the G5. What I do, I would put a little bit of a tape around here, because I want that glue to spill out a little bit. up and we're just gonna pour it in let's leave it for it to solidify now now I'm gonna go on the grinder rough belt and I'm gonna shape the handle This one is more harder than I thought it's gonna be. <laughs> Let's grab a fresh one. So our handle is looking pretty snazzy. Now what I'm gonna do is just to put a bit of oil on it, true oil. It's like a use usually for gun stocks, but it's really nice, it dries very nicely. A little bit of oil, Woo, that looks nice. African black with this, it's really neat. Have a look at this. Our knife is ready to be etched. Just a little bit of high grade paper, like 1500, 2000. So if there's any oils left on the blade, you'll be able to remove it easily without scratching it too much. Just make sure it's nice and clean before we put it in the acid. And now we can see what, it's hap what happens. Let's have a quick dip. Oh yeah, this is looking amazing. Can you see it? Yeah, that is looking pretty sweet. And now we're gonna put it in the acid, 15 minutes, let the pattern etch properly. It's been in a hot coffee for a little bit. Yeah, super funky pattern that needs a name, but yeah, if you got any good suggestion, pop it in the comments. <laughs> Yeah, done and dusted. Great news, you can win this Damascus chef knife made by Les simply by being one of our Patreon supporters. Visit ukbladeshow.com for more information or click the link in the description below. If you want to watch another bladesmith making a knife, click this video here. If you want to check out another interesting knife crafting video, check this link over here. We hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button if you did.